great indication of kind of what we're seeing. This is exactly the area that we're watching, and this is why that warning is in place. I recognize Tim McGraw. I knew that one. <laughs> and Alanis Moore said, oh, I mean, come on. I am so sorry. I am not <laughs> dying <this> over here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> otherwise, storms that we see overnight situations are never really good. So happy to see that at least some weakening is happening. It's already covered the sidewalks. It's covered the roads. So we're still continuing to watch that as well. Again, it's very cold outside. It's a dangerous situation. Don't be outside if you don't have to. Even better and if you do have it, a basement or a storm shelter. But I know that's not something everybody has. It's not something I have in my own home. So that interior room is a great place to be. Just saying I have sunburned. Oh my from gosh. Being out from the softball the game. the softball game. I was there maybe an hour or two. That was just, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I should have known better, really. In the roughly 15 minutes, it was on the ground. 87 structures were damaged with 12 completely destroyed. You'll need specific ingredients like flour, sugar, and butter. Tornadoes are the same way. You'll need some certain ingredients, instability, a change in wind speed, and moisture. And I know a lot of us were just hit with severe weather on Friday. You really have to be weather aware again this Tuesday. Criminal offensive side eye. Well, good Friday, and we had a pretty early start to our day. That sunrise coming in just before 530, and of course, just that time of year. The sunrise continues to get early and earlier until we hit June 21st, the start of summer. So just still enjoying that early sunrise, and it's a beautiful start to our day as well. Live look right now in Metropolis, seeing the sunlight. A couple of those clouds also moving in, but I still think we should be able to see plenty of sunlight and blue skies. Current temperature in Metropolis in those mid-60s, heat index reflecting it, but it is slowly getting pretty uncomfortable out there. We've got dew points in the uncomfortable range in those uh, mid 60s, so it's definitely going to feel humid as you're out and about this morning and then into this afternoon and evening. Some of us are already hitting 70 degrees like Harrisburg and Kennett down into the Boot Hill. Other areas somewhere in those mid 60s, Cape Girardeau, Fredericktown, both at 65, Sykeston, Carbondale at 66, Mount Vernon, a bit cooler at 62. By mid morning, already hitting 80 degrees into lunchtime in the afternoon, pushing 90. Still tracking the chance for a couple of those isolated storms. They can't completely be ruled out, but I would not cancel any of your Friday evening plans quite yet. First 90s of the season are expected for many today. That is well above average of uh, those lower 80s. So not record setting, but uncomfortable for any of those heat sensitive out there. Today, we're just tracking the isolated storms, the very warm temperatures. By this weekend, even warmer, believe it or not. We're talking mid 90s for Saturday. And then by next week, hey, good news if you're enjoying the July, August like weather, but um, it's sticking around at least for a while longer. Radar and satellite fairly calm right now, not even seeing any of those dominating features, just a couple of clouds and rain out there. Uh, temperatures not too bad as we're getting out and about, really don't need too much, not even that light jacket this morning. By 8 o'clock into the mid 70s, a couple of clouds continue to push in and move in by lunchtime. As you're on about for your afternoon, might run into some rain here and there, dodging some raindrops again. Would not cancel any of those plans. Five o'clock, there's the 90s on the board. That's going to be one of our warmest days we've seen of the year. By tonight, eight o'clock, feeling very much like a summer like type of night. So if you're enjoying that kind of vibe, great chance for you to get out and enjoy some at least local activities that are going on. Waking up tomorrow morning, it's going to be a lot cooler cooler similar to today. There's that really warm weather. Mid 90s for Saturday, low 90s for Sunday. Chance for some isolated storm Sunday again, but even after we get through the weekend, uh, starting the work week again, very warm 91. After that, we're somewhere into the 80s. So great to have the storm track 3F. Keep an eye on all of that heat, but then also keeping an eye on those isolated pop up storm chances. We have a couple of them on the board in our 7 and 10 day here. We've got isolated storms for Friday, Sunday and Tuesday 90s for today, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday, upper 80s for the work week. So 
very warm, of course, but uh, it is also viewer photo of the day. I've got this really cute little hummingbird. It was a really interesting story. They said the hummingbird flew into their office, their son caught it and <laughs> released it, which I think is very impressive. Yes, oh. I do too, especially for something that fast and small. Yes. Is that our winner today too? I think it is, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, awesome. well, congratulations. Well, talking about flying in here, our director, Jason Holland. Yes, Look at this. Awesome. He that was so this. distracting, by the way. Uh, come on over here and get some. Let's, we're in. Come and yeah, have a donut have a, with us. Hey, we're going to have a donut Sounds during good. the break, and we'll get to caught up on all of our top stories right after this. Outdoor warning sirens like this one play an important role when it comes to severe weather. They've even been credited to saving countless lives. There is a lot though that you may not know when it comes to sirens. It's an unmistakable sound, often one we associate with an impending tornado, but that's not always the case. For many, the risk depends on the sound you hear. For the city of Carbondale, the first is for attacks. So the attack siren is meant for uh, Department of Homeland Security to allow uh, emergency operations coordinators to let people know in case there is an emergent threat. The second and more familiar one, inclement weather. And so one is tornadoes, obviously, and then anything over, I think it's right around the threshold of 62 miles an hour of wind. So we just want to make sure with that high wind, anything in that type of uh, that wind, that speed can cause damage or kill somebody. Brian Hall, the emergency operations coordinator for the city of Carbondale, says when it comes to severe weather, it all begins in the National Weather Service office with their warning coordination meteorologist, Christine Walgus, who oversees these exact situations. A lot of what we are doing is called mesoanalysis. And so we're trying to figure out what the atmosphere is doing and try to figure out when things are going to happen, how bad they may be, and making sure that we're messaging that out. Back in Southern Illinois, Orville Rowe, coordinator emergency manager for Jackson County EMA, says although each area receives the same information, the way they respond differs. But typically it's each jurisdiction will set off their own sirens to their whatever their uh, standard operating procedure would be for that. Which is why if you live in Carbondale, a siren may sound for hail and strong winds compared to other towns that choose to only sound for tornadoes. But it's really for those who are outdoors. They were designed a long time ago to warn people who were outdoor workers, farmers, or people that worked outdoors, let them know, hey, something's going on. So sirens were never meant for people to be you know, hearing them inside. Which makes having multiple ways to receive alerts even more important. While you shouldn't only rely on the outdoor warning sirens, Carbondale is busy working on making upgrades. These drawings were not correct back 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've redone the map to make sure we pick up these coverage area gaps. Mm -hmm. And that's just something we didn't know that we were missing. Right. 